You've seen learning rates placed into various training algorithms like Atom and Stochastic Bot Backpropagation, but what is, how do you know what learning rate to actually put in? And is the same learning rate good for the entire run of your training? Learning rate schedules will allow you to vary this amount over time and usually decrease the training rate as your neural network trains closer and closer to convergence. We'll see a very simple way that we can adjust the, the training rate here. You can get very, very complex on how you adjust the training rate as your neural network progresses. So here we are in Colab, and I'm going to run this code that I have at the top of every part of this course. All that's going on here is we're mounting Google Drive and we are checking to see what sort of accelerator we have. This will be CUDA since we are running on Colab. And then we also include an early stopping class that I created earlier. It's from module 3.4. You can check that out in the GitHub repository if you want to see more explanation of how early stopping is working. It basically stops training the neural network as soon as the validation set is no longer improving to prevent overfitting. So we're going to use an, a simple early stopping provider that is in PyTorch. It is called step LR and it takes three parameters. The optimizer that we're dealing with, like Adam in this case, the step size, the number of epochs that it should evaluate after. You don't necessarily want this evaluating on every single epoch that you're going through. And then gamma is the amount by which you are scaling the learning rate. For instance, if a gamma is 0.1, then the learning rate will be multiplied by 0.1, effectively reducing it by 90%. That's way too much, usually. I, I usually go a lot, a lot lighter and a lot more gradular. You can also apply functions, like you, you may want something exponential or logarithmic, depending on what you're really going for. I am going to load my sample data set that we've seen many times before. It's just a mix of continuous and categorical values where you can, you can use it to learn to predict both cl uh, classification and regression. It's a tabular data set. We're going to set it up here where we're trying to predict the age, so we're doing a regression. We'll use the other values that are in the, the table to try to predict age. We're going to use k-fold cross-validation. We're going to do five folds. We are going to shuffle. This code is all, we've seen it before. I have explanations of it in, in previous videos. If you go to the ones on cross-validation, we're basically just looping across those five folds. And for each fold, we're creating a neural network that has 20 first hidden layer neurons and 20 or 10 second hidden layer neurons and one output neuron because we're, it's linear, we're doing, we're doing regression. We also pre-compile the neural network for additional performance boost. This was something that was recently added in PyTorch 2.0. And we're going to use the Atom Optimizer. But we're going to attach a scheduler to the Atom Optimizer. It is, and let me go ahead and get this running while I'm explaining it. But this is going to use this optimizer every 50 training epochs and it's going to scale up by 0 0.90. So it's, it's going to lose 10% each, each time. And then we're, we're going to go up to 500 epochs. Of course, early stopping will stop us usually well before we hit that. And we are going to now loop through all of the epochs. We're doing batches, just, just like we've done in, in previous ones, where we're not just training and updating the weights on the entire data set. Rather, we're doing many batches as we as we go through. Then we check the early stopping and stop if, if we need to. This one line here is very important. This is where the learning rate schedule interfaces really with, with everything. And then you can see where the, the results. This is probably not necessarily big enough of a neural network that we would necessarily see an improvement from the training schedule, but this shows you the mechanics of going through this and how you can apply it to other types of neural networks. 
Thank you for watching the video, and if this was useful, please give the video a like. Subscribe to the channel so that you can see other parts of this course as I release it, maybe other courses, and various projects that I work on in deep learning.